Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer and this is my walk time blog number three. The more freedom you give, the less freedom you guarantee. Now if you are the author of a creative work, which could be some software or a hardware design or a book or you might have written a poem or a song or created a painting, pretty much anything that comes out of your own imagination and is then expressed. If you want to share that particular work with other people in an open way, such as uh, applying a free software license to it or putting it under um, Creative Commons type license so that other people can remix it and use it for their own purposes. You are faced with a little conundrum when it comes time to choosing a license. The conundrum is that the more freedom you give to recipients of your work, the less freedom you guarantee for the work itself. Which sounds a little contradictory. Now think about it like this. There is a spectrum on which various licenses can fall. And at one end of the spectrum, all rights reserved, is the classic proprietary model. You create something like a piece of software and it's protected under copyright because you created it and you reserve all rights so nobody else is allowed to use it for any purpose whatsoever unless you give them specifically rights to do that. And that doesn't something I should say, I'll come back to this in a later video blog I think, but that is not relevant to whether it's published or not. Something can have all rights reserved and have a published design. Being published does not make something open. I'll get back to that later. So at the other end of the spectrum you can give away all rights. You can say I want to put this particular work into the public domain. Anyone can take it and do anything they like with it and I have no say in it. And um, nobody even needs to acknowledge the source of it. The thing is that most licenses and the reason that licenses exist at all is because most of the time we want to put our work somewhere along that continuum and this is something that Richard Stallman, very clever guy that he is, obviously realized very early on and I think this is one of the, uh, one of the underlying reasons that things like the the GPL, the GNU Public License, were conceived in the first place. Now think about the far end of the continuum where you have no rights reserved and you've given away all rights to your work. The end result is that anyone can take that work and incorporate it into their own product or they can modify it and stick their own name on it and you have no recourse whatsoever. So the work itself can be taken and closed. So it can start off as something that is uh, open, but then it can become part of a totally closed product. And that may or may not be what you want. It might be perfectly fine. For example, if you are creating example code to go along with um, an open hardware project and you want to allow anybody to use that code in whatever form they like, then just release it into the public domain. Let anybody do anything they like with it and you don't care. That's great. There are times though when you want to make sure that if other people are using your code and or other work and benefiting from it, anything that they do to improve it will also be contributed back so that other people will benefit from it as well. And that is the classic open source development model or the free software development model. So one interesting way of looking at this is to examine the Creative Commons license which is specifically designed to have a number of flags or switches that you can turn on or off to allow or disallow certain things. And there are four variable attributes of the Creative Commons license. Uh, one is the no derivatives flag, which basically means people can use this but they're not allowed to modify it. Now the thing is that if you release a work with a no derivatives flag, that's really not open because how can other people uh, build on the work and contribute and provide things back to you and improve the overall state of the ecosystem if all they can do is consume what you've created and not modify it. There is also the attribution clause which is generally thought to be fairly innocuous. It basically says anyone that uses this work must give attribution to the original author. Uh, there is also a no commercial use clause which is a little bit more controversial and this is really getting down to the crux of this whole issue. If you release work 
under a no commercial use clause, then uh, it means that other people can use it for personal use, but a company can't come along and make profit on it, or an individual can't come along and make profit on it. And once again, technically, in my mind, that makes something non-free because it's restricting the end use. Now, if you look at something like the GPL, the new public license, you'll notice that there, it is specifically structured to prevent, um, well, to stop people from preventing specific uses. So, for example, well, the classic example is if you release something as a piece of free software and you say, this cannot be used in weapons or a nuclear reactor, um, that is restricting the end use to which something can be put. And this is separate from a moral issue. It's not really a question of, do I, um, do I like the fact that my software, my creation might end up as part of a weapon system somewhere, which I'm sure most people would not like the idea of. It's, um, it's a bit of an extreme example, but it's really to illustrate the point. If you put uh, restrictions on the applications to which your work can be used, then it's really not free. So think carefully about licenses. Um, now for my own particular purposes, I came up against this conundrum probably uh, a couple of months ago when I started work on a little uh, PHP library to communicate with the Liquid Planner API which is just a web services API. And this particular uh, package was something that I was using in a business context, but it's not specifically related to the business. And I see far more benefit from getting other people involved in helping work on this project than uh, simply locking it up and saying, no, it's mine, nobody else is allowed to use it. I would be very happy if other um, commercial businesses started using this library. That would be great because everybody would benefit. So I chose GPL v3 as a license for that particular library uh, because in that particular case my decision was that along that spectrum of freedom I want to give other people the right to use my work for whatever the purpose they see fit as long as improvements and changes they make are also made available to other people under the same terms. And for that particular scenario, that's what the GPL v3 achieves. So, um, next video blog, I will have a quick chat about uh, copyright and the fact that publication does not make something free. See ya!